Hi, everybody. I'm Nina Bosky, one of the producers of Maryland Behind the Icon. I have the privilege and the honor of being able to introduce our actress that is playing Marilyn Monroe. Her name is Erin Gavin, and what a talent she is. And before I have her say anything, I'm just going to give you a little tidbit on how talented she is. So, Erin, welcome to the show, or welcome to this segment. But I'd also like you to just give the audience a taste of your everyday language so they can get what your original dialect is. Oh, okay. So, well, let me just pick a line that we're, Marilyn is famous for. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's do it in the Marilynish kind of way that you would do it. Happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, and the reason being I say that is because I had a chance to meet Erin when she was actually playing Marilyn Monroe on stage in West Hollywood. Remember at uh, what was the theater that we had uh, we uh, that you were playing Marilyn at? What was it called? Uh, so the first play that you came to see was uh, Marilyn My Secret, and it was in the Matcha Theater in West oh, Hollywood. Oh, that's what it is. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so here I am, she's sounding so much like Marilyn Monroe. And then I go after the show and I go up to her and I introduce myself and she just starts out in this Scottish <laughs> accent that I'm like, wait a minute here, this is the same person. And <laughs> it just, it's really, um, it's wonderful to get a chance to know you and for really the audience to get to know you because I have to say playing Marilyn Monroe, and knowing how many people that we had to try to find to play Norma Jean, the young Norma Jean, I mm -hmm. certainly know how hard this role is for any actress, but you have the ability to kind of create that sense of her essence that I think is probably more important than just getting the voice right or getting the tone right or getting the walk right. Why did you want to play Marilyn? What, what made you attracted to the Marilyn role? Because this is not your first role that you've been playing Marilyn. Oh, so, so well, this is a good story. Um, basically, uh, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't really know much about Marilyn at all. And uh, I had an audition. I was almost ready to give up, to be honest, in LA. And... Uh, the story goes, well, the night before the casting, I was walking across the street and uh, I was coming out of Earth Cafe on Melrose in LA. Everybody knows that if you're in LA. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, I got hit by a car. Mm -hmm. So um, I ended up in Cedar sinai Hospital. Um, I fractured my hip and I missed the casting. So obviously, you know, it was a bit of a downward spiral for me at that time. But for whatever reason, three weeks in, I'd missed the casting, obviously, and I felt like, you know what, I'm just so not ready to give up, but I feel, you know, sad and whatnot, but there was something in me that just said, no, I'm going to contact the casting director and tell them what happened. So I did, and uh, I actually got a reply from the director and the casting director and said, you know, when you're better, can you come in? So... Uh, in the meantime, you said, can you send us a tape of you singing happy birthday, Mr. President? So actually I did. And uh, they said, okay, come in as soon as you can. So it was about a week later, I hobbled in. <laughs> and uh, I read some scenes with the gent who was playing Bobby Kennedy and uh, who, um, you know, was fantastic. And then after about 30 minutes of doing songs and rehearsals they said okay when can you start and I was shocked because you know here I am like ready to give up <laughs> you know I just couldn't believe it I was ready to give up like honestly I was ready to move back to Bonnie Scotland and just call it a day but that little thing in me was just so determined just not yet not yet and so it was like music to my ears to hear that. And uh, they had already casted Marilyn and um, they then said, we're gonna double the role because we, we just feel that you have that essence, that vulnerability that she had, so we want you. So 
that's really what happened. I know how it all happened. Yeah. And then what happened was I was standing on stage and I was rehearsing myself into this black hole. You know, when you're on stage, you have all these lights and it's just a black hole. And I was in a theater myself because I wanted to rehearse as much as I could. And I stood there and I thought, oh my gosh, I remembered when I was seven years old, flashback that my dad had bought me, it was one of the first things he ever bought me, was a like full-size picture of Marilyn Monroe um, from the famous scene where she's standing over the subway grating in Seven Year Itch and the skirt's blown up and I was doing that scene. Like I was literally on stage rehearsing that scene and it just took me back. It just wow. was like, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be here for some reason. I don't know why, but like it all just, the jigsaw puzzle just fell into place and I felt like peace with it and calm. And I remember when I was seven, like I loved all the old black and white movies and my favorite movie was some like a hot. But mm -hmm. even though I didn't know much about Marilyn, what I did know, I was like, wow, this woman is so glamorous and just has, she just seems just lovely. And so, oh, wow, one day I would like to be an actress just like her. Oh, wow. And, you know, it's so interesting, too, because the role that you're playing right now in our Marilyn Behind the Icon how does that differ from other roles that you've played with her? Because there's some some really intense scenes, especially in this first season. Yes. What I loved about this uh, particular um, script was you guys have captured really who she is off screen and on screen. And with plays, uh, a lot of them, um, it's mainly her essence on screen because that's how people remember her or how they know her. Uh, obviously, the fans who really know a lot about her are no different. But um, the one thing I really uh, first read was that, wow, I love the fact that you guys have really captured her. So I knew that Gaddy, who's obviously um, had written the script and Randall, uh, had really captured and really knew who she was. Um, and what I also loved was the fact that as an actress, you can really add color to the performance because she's up and down and she's um, really vulnerable and different moods and yes the plays and yes the movies and documentaries that I've done have captured that also but you guys went much deeper um, because we can it's <laughs> because <fun>. we can. <laughs> <laughs> can yes you know you're not on the mercy of we got to just complete com you know just come at it for the sizzle and not really the truth around Marilyn yeah. what do you personally want people to get out of this series I want like every performance you want people to feel the emotion um, and my job is to make sure to entertain you know mm -hmm. and my job is to entertain and whether and that includes feeling that emotion that I'm portraying so I feel like if that's what comes out of it for the audience that's watching it then I've done my job so Aaron, there's a wonderful scene in episode six and it's at the very end of the episode where you are actually, it's a real scene that happened with you and Clark Gable. And I have to say, when I first listened to the scene, I thought for a moment I was listening to Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable for real. That's how good the scene was. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. So let me ask you this one last question. If Marilyn were to be listening to this podcast, what do you think she would say? Or what do you think she'd feel? Uh, oh. She would definitely feel emotional. I mean, you're looking back on your own life, aren't you? But um, I think she would feel that we hopefully did a great job on it. Um, because the writers and uh, obviously the film team really did a lot of research on this and so I feel like she she would feel like we did her proud 
I feel. There's a lot of emotion, a lot of color. And I think we nailed it. Uh, one hopes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to end this interview with a wonderful uh, thing that Marilyn would say to people and to herself is to hold a good thought for Marilyn. Let's hold a good thought for Aaron. And let's hold a good thought for this podcast. Thank you.